<laughs> Guys, morning, how's it going? Oh, it's a lovely day out here in sunny East Anglia at the moment. And I'm out for a walk with Jack Jack. Oi, come here. There's gonna be a lot of that in this video. He's down there, running around, having a little bit of a nosy around a load of new builds in my village. Trying to get a little bit of a look in to see how good the plumbing is. Morning, Mark, how's it going? Um, so that's, that's what I've been doing. I've been a bit naughty. I didn't think there'd be anyone on site today, but there is. And they're walking around with, uh, with their big diggers and stuff like that. Morning, Martin. Morning, Linas. Um, thing is, right, the problem with what they've done here, I mean, look, look, this is a beautiful site, isn't it? These houses look absolutely fantastic. Morning, our kid, our brothers, our Anthony. Uh, the problem is, though, is that we're running out of places to walk dogs around here. So it's one of those. Morning, guys. Good day. 350 Munro. How's it going? I'm just going to go through this bit here. Jack, come to heel. Heel. Hold on, guys. Let me just hook this dog up. Sit. Sit. Look at him. Sit. Stay. Stay. No moving. You stay there. Don't go anywhere, Jack. Stay. There we go. Right, yeah. So what I'm going to try and do, I'm just walking up this road in the middle of nowhere with the boy. Yes, Jack, Jack. Uh, looking for basically a footpath to walk the bloody dog. Uh, at the same time, I thought I filmed two videos right on jobs this week, and I was going to be doing a job this morning. Um, can I add a radiator into microball system by teeing into the pipes? Uh, the answer to that question lies in how many radiators are already teed into that 10 mil. Honestly, you shouldn't do it, but you could probably get away with teeing off two radiators. Well, basically having two radiators fed by one 10 mil feed pipe, okay? If you, if you try and go more than that, you're gonna start getting into trouble with flow rates and stuff like that. But uh, good morning, Jake, how's it going, is it Jake? Yeah, so you're gonna have problems with flow rates on there and that sort of thing. I am gonna get a uh, painful hand. Morning apprentice on fire. Um, yeah, so when it comes to that, you can tee into it. I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, maybe if you can, if you've got a thing called a squid, Looking into wet underfloor heating, but we have, oh man, these are really, YouTube does this, right? Um, when you guys post a message on the, the chat thing, it slowly starts to fade out after about five seconds. So I struggle to answer the question in time. So, I, you know, don't think I'm ignoring you. But I think I've got the gist there, morning Scott, uh, that you've got, you want wooden floorboards on underfloor heating. Right, what you wanna do is look into a thing called low build. Uh, I think Wavin make it. But what it is, it's like a, a 10 millimeter bit of insulation and it has a aluminium track that you push a pipe into and that aluminium basically spreads the heat so you've got a higher surface area. Um, hold on Fashi, just give me a sec guys before you start coming in the questions because they keep disappearing on here. Right, we're gonna go through this hedge in a sec. Um, but this low build stuff, right, because of the higher surface area it will heat up your wood more effectively um, well, I'm trying to see, I'm trying to find a hole in the hedge here guys. Um, so that's basically what you use. Every time I've done underfloor heating on a house that is going to end up having uh, wood like that, <laughs> I've used low build, okay? Hello from Devon, thanks Chris. Um, I don't know if you guys can actually see, let, his, get, <laughs> let him walk his dog in peace. I'm the one who started the live video guys. Morning James, checking in from Honeymoon on Cyprus. Andy, I've got a little recommendation if you're in Cyprus, especially on the south of the uh, island, go to a little village called Pisori. Um, it's divided into two parts. Got a hole in the hedge, guys. Look at this. Hole in the hedge. Jack's gonna love it. He's gonna love it. I'm gonna be a lot off the lead in a minute. You can't wait, can you, Jack? What we're gonna do, we're just gonna make a beeline all the way up across that field. Um, Pisori, go there. Let me just, uh, Jack, you know, ready? Let's get this dog off the lead. Stay, stay, Jack. Look at him. Can you say hello to everyone? You, you a happy boy, aren't you? Stay there, stay there. Stay, stay. Good, Jack, let's go. <laughs> Look at this, they've beautifully ploughed this field. And I'm out here knackering it. I'll tell you what, that's deer, that's, that there is deer tracks. There. Running across somewhere there. So, hey hi. So yeah, um, <laughs> it's a beautiful morning. This is not easy going ground. 
This reminds me of my attempt to summit Mount Everest here. It was a hard, hard uh, dream that I had. <laughs> Just need some sheep to chase. Oh, don't get me started on sheep. You say to Jack sheep and he goes, well, you, you're not, you love them, don't you, Jack? And squirrels. Yes, we love the squirrels, don't we? Uh, so yeah, low build underfloor heating. That's what you want to use for that if you're going to be having wooden floor. And if you're on holiday in Cyprus, go to a village called Pissori. The top part of the village is almost like you're in Italy. It's lovely. May I have your phone number, please, to get some advice? Ha! <laughs> you're funny, man. Jesus, if I gave my phone, phone number out, it would never stop ringing. Um, your best bet to ask for advice, well, you could become a patron for a start and you'll get, like, literally, you will get straight through. Um, or you could try, comment on some of the videos or send us a Facebook message. Uh, me or Josh will try and get back to you because uh, Joshua obviously is helping us out because the channel is a big channel and it's hard to run on your own. And I'm getting a bit out of breath walking across this field. This is I'm a fat bastard. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm not actually, I think I've sort of lost a bit to be totally honest with you. But yeah, look at that. Look at the length of my lovely shadow. And Jack Jack here having a beautiful morning. Are you Jack? Where's those cats? Where's those cats going Jack? Morning. So yeah, it's a lovely day to be alive. Getting out in the sun, walking out in the villages, out in the countryside, across this poor bloke's field. That this should be a footpath really across here. You know, I lament the fact that footpaths in this country are being destroyed by wealthy landowners. It's like, it's like Fantastic Mr. Fox, but in real life, with Boris Bunsen Bean uh, making, was it cider? Ripping up everything. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I, I like progress to be honest, but you know, it's about anything. Thank you, Farshid, I think, Farshid. Farshid. So, um, yeah, my plans for today. Uh, oh, <laughs> my plans for today. I bought a tuk tuk. Now, Lee's asked a question. Morning, mate. Best way to get around bleed screws out or just replace a new radiator? Right, okay. This is a good question. And actually, it might be quite a good little mini video. So, you know, you've come up with quite a good shout there. What size of shoes am I? Uh, depends what make. Eight and a half. Something like, that, something like that, nine, but it doesn't affect the size of my penis because I'm afraid that's always going to be fairly small. <laughs> anyway, so how to get a radiator bleed key valve out if it's not coming out. On an old radiator, one of the tricks you'd use is you get a hacksaw and you cut into the radiator and hope to cut into the end of the radiator bleed key. Uh, and then what that will do is you'll then effectively have a slot that you can go in uh, and then you can undo, you can get then a slotted screwdriver in there and undo it like that, okay? Uh, the other thing you can use is an easy bleed, which is when you ignore the fact that that's stuck in there and you go and use a, uh, you basically put an easy bleed into the side of the radiator and then that self taps itself into the side and then you can basically get everything out like that. Oh well, guys, this is heavy going. I'm walking on stuff. Like, look at this shingly crap. I feel like Lawrence of Arabia in uh, David Lean's film, which if it's a rainy day on a Sunday sometime this winter, light the fire, put that film on. Uh, got to change the system with push button. What brand would you recommend? Well, I've done a lot of uh, uh, changes over with Viva stuff. I love Viva stuff because the good thing about it is you can buy one thing, sling it in the back of the van, and then that will cover all bases for you. Okay. Uh, cheers, James. I have a look at Easy Bleed, top man. I've actually got some, mate, in my uh, in my drawer. I think um, perhaps DM me, DM me over your um, address. I'll see if I can bung some in the post for you. If not, just have a look yourself and see if you can find them. But I think I've got some in my drawer, so if I have, I'll send them out to you, mate, and you can you can have a bit of a go, have a bit of a fun thing with them. The sun's getting up now; it's getting hotter. The uh, I now wish I brought my water bottle with me and uh, and my my pet yak to come out with us. Uh, 
but all I've got is Jack, who is absolutely no use when it comes to that sort of thing. Just join your Patreon. Oh, thank you, man. That really means a lot. Um, last week, I started my Patreon account off because some people are actually asking me to do it. I was always a bit sort of wary about doing it because I don't want to change in any way what I do on YouTube and Patreon is not going to do that. But this is a big field, guys. Look at the size of this beast. Um, hold on, Lena. Just I'll, I'll come back to you in a minute. Can you let let you shout to Cold Main Supply? Yes, you can. But you have to make sure it's the right shout. Anyway, he, no, Jack will not go far. But anyway, look. So the Patreon account will have things like outtakes, um, and I did put the first outtakes video up on my Patreon account last week. It was very, very sweary. Uh, it was me getting stuff wrong on the green screen. There were some outtakes from um, from doing uh, getting the studio prepared because I had to repaint the floor in the studio. Actually, I haven't put that in yet. Um, and there's just quite a lot of outtakes and silly stuff, just like, buggered up lines that I get wrong, that sort of thing. I'll tell you what, this is hammering me now. Look at me, how many calories have I burnt this morning, guys? You lot all laying in bed, slowly straking yourself to plumber parts, and I'm out here smashing it out. Probably burnt somewhere in the region of about 35 calories. Oh my God. Hi mate, loved your last time. So James Feed. Cheers. Oh, is that Matt? Well, that's one thing I've got. I'm supposed to be going to my mate's house this morning to uh, put on a remote expansion vessel. Oh guys, like every time I just, it's really irritating. I see you put like really good long questions up and they come up and just fade away. YouTube, if you're watching, sort that out on your app. It's really irritating. At least have them so I can go back and scroll and see what they are. So I haven't seen your question at all there. And as you can see, it's quite sunny and I'm struggling to see the screen, but by all means, keep asking. Opinions are removing the bath from a house and having showers only. Well, that's personal preference there. Uh, I personally think, um, I personally think that every house should have a bath in it, especially in the winter time. There's nothing better than having a cup of tea in the bath, watching a bit of Netflix on a Sunday night before you go back to the week of work. So I'm always a fan of that, but don't get me wrong, I probably have 10, 10 or 15 baths a year, and that's it. Would you recommend a gas safe course? I just finished my plumbing. I would, yeah, but um, oh, don't become one of them gas engineers. I don't know what it is about gas safety courses, but it seems to turn quite a lot of people into complete twats. Uh, <laughs> they become self-righteous, uh, opinionated. They uh, instantly get an account on Twitter or Instagram. Jack, come to heel. Sorry, guys. And uh, so don't do that. I mean, I've got accounts on Twitter and Instagram, but I don't go on there to have a go at other people about their work, which is something we're going to cover in a second. Same here. Right, here we go, guys. Watch this. Sit. Jack, give me the paw. Other paw. Other paw. No, other paw. I get both paws, do I? Yes. Well, ah, 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 come here, sit. Stay there. Bus there, people going to work. Happy dog. Yes, right, we're ready now, aren't we? Ah, ah. Jesus Christ, man, you're a nutcase. Uh, yes, there are some Plumbing Disasters videos in the pipeline. Me and Josh are getting ready for Plumbing Disasters Halloween. Can you believe it? Halloween is coming. Sorry, guys, it's quite a main road here. Halloween is on the way. And uh, we've crossed that field now. I survived. I survived the field of doom. Um, so now we're going into, a, into an area of my local village that says no entry. God knows what that means. Chu said it's not worth doing a level three as it won't get me a gas ticket. Sit, sit. Sorry, Jack's seen birds now. Are they rabbits, Jack? Go on, see them off, get them. Uh, of course, real outback area here. Um, to be honest, why would you not do your level three? If you can do it now, you might regret not doing it later. Uh, I'd, I'd highly recommend you try and do all the training you can while you're young, because uh, when you get older, none of it goes in, and you'll just, you know, it'll just, it just doesn't go in. And that's the end of it. Well, then Jimbo, got a great plumbing disaster from Japan. I'll send you later. Well, by all means do on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Lol, I'm 42. Mate, you're knackered. That's the end of it. 
you're not learning nothing, bruv, like me. Nothing goes in now. So, uh, let me have a little quick chat with you as well about, um, about plumbing and social media. Now, this is, might be a little bit of a controversial thing. Obviously, as some of you guys know who follow me outside of YouTube, on my Twitter and my Facebook, and my, uh, my Instagram, uh, I first started, first started plumbing about a millennium ago. So let's, just, let's just get on with this subject quickly, guys, okay? I'll invite you for some more questions in a minute. Um, so, say someone puts up a video, uh, a post of their work, okay? Especially an apprentice. Now, often, that work won't be to a great standard, okay? And, let's face it, sometimes there'll be technical things wrong, snot on the soldering, stuff like that. Won't be great. Um, now, some people will then go on there. I will share that as a plum proud, okay? Because that is an apprentice who is proud of their work, obviously, and they have, they've just obviously got something in them that means that, you know, they've actually got the balls to share their work out. By the way, guys, this we are now on an old railway track that was shut by beaching, which as a country, possibly the most short-sighted thing we've ever done was destroy the small network of railways that we've got. This railway here would have taken people all the way from Cambridge to Colchester, and now you've got a trunk road over there that's chock-a-block every week, all right? It's wrong, beach into dick, you should never have done it. Anyway, um, if I was to fit an external expansion vessel on a system, this is the job that I am supposed to be doing today. We'll come back to it in a minute. Do I go up here? I don't think I've, I've not walked up here in a long time. If I go this way, this walk turns into about six and a half mile walk, uh, or I go that way and it's about three miles. I think we'll go that way. He's not gonna be happy though, because he knows, this one here knows the, like the longest routes. So he'll try and make you, he'll, he'll run off down paths thinking, yeah, I'll go this. if I go this way, he'll follow me. He'll follow me that way. Oh, woof, woof de woof. But no, it's not like that, is it, Jack? We're going this way, come on. <laughs> Uh, also, actually, down here, there's loads of slow um, slow plants, so slow gin and that. Should I say, should I lay on the tracks now? <laughs> I am a bit knackered, actually, but, you know, it's a beautiful morning, great day to be alive. Um, right, so look, here we go. Let's just talk about expansion vessels quickly, and then I'm going to go back to talking about um, people posting their photos of work online and other plumbers thinking that it's a good idea to lambast people for bad work. Now, there's nothing wrong with sending a plumbing disaster in because usually that's someone who's done that work anonymously. You went in there afterwards, you saw that awful bit of pipe work in that pub toilet and sent it in and we could all laugh about it. And also, people like apprentices can inadvertently learn what bad plumbing looks like and how to not appear on those plumbing disasters photos. That's one thing. But if someone sends me in a photo of some nice, of a nice install, okay, of, uh, of a nice install, hi Audi Car Club, I don't know if I remember you, but anyway, carry on. Um, of a nice install of um, a boiler and like, I don't know, an unvented cylinder, and then someone points out the usual, which is, oh, it doesn't look like there's uh, an adequate drop from the tun dish to the first bend. <sighs> I'm like, look man, look at how good that work is. That is such a minor, it's just a minor thing. It's one of those things that people always seem to point out. Um, just gives me the ump a bit because someone's someone obviously feels proud about the work that they've done they feel proud about the fact that you know that they've done a lovely job there and everything's great you know and you know they've put their work over to us and said look I'm really proud of this we put it online and someone said that's shit because you didn't do this uh, and it was kind of brought to a fore a little bit because we we, we shared a photo by uh, an apprentice and it wasn't it wasn't great work, don't get me wrong. This is a first year apprentice. He's just learned how to solder, just learned how to bend like low carbon steel and stuff like that. And it wasn't a great job, but the, the apprentice took a photo of it and sent it to us and said, my first frame, I'm really, really proud of it. Um, and you know what? That lad is the lad that I'd like to teach because that lad isn't sat there on his phone, apart from sending a photo to us. He's not sat there reading the paper. He's actually, really into it he's, he's young he's following other people on social media who are in his trade and he's done a frame it's not the best but you know what he sent us over a thing saying i'm really proud of this 
you know, that's great. I, I much prefer to have people like that on here, you know, uh, rather than people who, who, who've never ever put their neck on the block when it comes to any of their work. They don't take photos of it. I know a few plumbers, right, who do amazing work. In fact, I, I know when I've gone into someone's airing cupboard, which plumber's done the work sometimes, and it'd be great if they took photos of their work. Well, they do. I've seen his phone. He's got loads of photos of, work, of his work on there. He never shares it with anyone. He just has it on his phone. I just think that's sad because not, it's not, I don't think sharing your work online is about boasting. It's actually about helping people see what a good job is. And, uh, or that's what it is for me. And that's why we share a load of people's photos. Another reason as well it, we like to share people's photos is because I don't think I should use social media to promote myself which is what some plumbers seem to think it's all there for. It's one thing promoting your business to customers in your local area using your social media, but there are some people who th who've thought that they're going to use their social media for some sort of fame thing, which is why I don't tend to like going to trade shows that much because I'm not really, I'm not really s down with that. I much prefer to just make content, promote good work, show people what bad work is, and have a bit of a laugh and maybe put Give, well, but empower someone to join this industry to see that there is a community and that we're all not a bunch of cowboy dicks who rip people off and it's actually a highly regulated industry it's very professional and you should be proud to be part of it so there you go there you go <laughs> uh, how much do you charge for call out uh, 480 quid uh, in cash <laughs> uh, I, I personally don't charge call out fee because um, really I work within, I don't ever go more than 10 miles from my house, pretty much. All my customers are customers I've had for years. Uh, I don't take on any new customers anymore. I've got my book of customers and they're who I work for. I don't tend to work for builders that much, which is, lots, you know, often you can charge a call out fee when you're doing that. Sorry guys, I, I have to watch it here. This is Stinging Your Nettle Central. And look at my little leggy wigs. I could get stung somehow. Um, and also, I just think if I turn up, and I fix the problem, then great, I'll charge you then. If I turn up and I can't, I'll go away and it'll be like, well, I couldn't. But the reason I can get away with doing that is because I don't have to travel that far. It's not a lot of time about my life. Uh, guys, every time you put a new message up, they just disappear. Here we go, we've got our first area of, of stinging nettles. This is, today's um, live video feels a little bit like a channel called Bald and Bankrupt on YouTube, which uh, you should definitely watch if you're interested in like Russian history and things like that. Um, cool, guys, we're going through here. Right, so let me talk to you about the job that I'm doing today, or I'm supposed to be doing, and I really, really hope that Matt, Matt is watching, because Matt, if you're watching, I'm now coming on Monday morning. <laughs> uh, I've got other stuff to do, man. Uh, Matt's a mate, he'll understand. Um, so that's one of those things. So, Matt had a Grant Vortex fitted a combi one outside and if you're thinking of like doing oil guys which you know oil is still a huge thing uh hold on guys i am going to do a video about this expansion vessel install okay robert so um don't worry there will be an install on that and i'll talk talk you through what i'm thinking so the problem is right a lot of boilers come with an expansion vessel fitted and most engineers are like yes bang back in the net alan partridge style this expansion vessel is going to account for the expansion of the whole system uh, well, you're going to have to read the instructions on that one a little bit because sometimes it doesn't. And that's especially true with Grant Vortexes, okay? So Grant Vortex uh, is an excellent, excellent oil boiler. In my opinion, it is the best on the market. And I do a lot of boiler servicing, so I don't just fit them. I see them years and years later, okay? And Grant Vortex is the hard-working powerhouse beast. They're very, very easy to service. They're very, very efficient. They are miles, miles better than a Worcester Green Star which is a complete heap of poo, especially the condensing chamber where you've got this plastic thing, all these little wiry bits you've got to take out. Sometimes you have to take the burner out. Oh, they're just a nightmare. That being said, Grant do make one model of boiler that I don't recommend you install. Uh, just go for a Grant, but a different type. And that's their wall mounted internal and their external. Very difficult to get the burner out without having to take the whole boiler casing apart. But anyway, anyway, when you are installing a boiler like this, on a system of say 10 radiators. Hold on, Kevin, all right? We will go through this stuff. Um, when, you're making, uh, when, you're, when you're installing a boiler like this, you should think about, oh, hold on, look at that. 
Isn't that just beautiful? Hey, yeah, what? Look at him. Hello, mate. You scrubby doggy. You scrubby doggy. <laughs> so, um, when you're installing a boiler, Grant Vortex, it's got an expansion vessel in it. The expansion vessel only accounts for the expansion of water within the boiler. So it's only accounting for the expansion of, say, 20 to 30 litres, maybe 40 litres. I, I doubt it's that much in a boiler jacket. So what you're going to have to do, you've got 10 radiators that are, have not had any expansion that's been accounted for, which is bad. Oh, we're getting low battery on here at the moment, guys, so I might have to sort of end this soon. Um, that's a bad thing. We don't want that at all. Any, but hold on. We will do, I will do you, right, we're going to talk about two more things, okay? But I've got 20% battery left, all right, guys? So if we have to, I might do another live video um, tomorrow just to address some of your bits and bobs, or you can ask us these questions somewhere and we'll see if I can see if I can help you out. But anyway, expansion vessels. Um, so when you're installed in one of these, you are going to have to put an, a remote expansion vessel in to, um, cheers, Jerry. Uh, you're going to have to put a remote expansion vessel in to account for the expansion of the radiators, the water in those radiators needs somewhere to expand to. Um, I think I'm in one of those areas where teenagers shag. Just got a feeling I might be in one of those. One of those areas you used to go to when you were 16 with your missus. Uh, hmm. Anyway, uh, I don't think me and Emily came here. Actually, where the hell am I? Am I already? I don't know where I am, I have no idea. Uh, so, um, so, you need to fit a remote expansion vessel on. Now, I'd always recommend that, say you've got, you can buy a 12 litre expansion vessel, you could buy an 18 litre expansion vessel, or you could buy a 25 litre one. Guess what, the, guess the size that I've got in my van ready for this 10, 10 radiators one? I've got a 25 litre expansion vessel in my van, ready to go in on this job, and I'm definitely gonna get stung along here. This is gonna be a stungy, stung, stung. The reason for that is, is the more expansion you've got on the heating system, the more level and relaxed, in a way, the water is. It's got a nice big area to expand into. Every time the system starts to get up to one bar, blackberries just along here. God, there's blackberries everywhere. That is a lovely big blackberry tree or bush. Um, every time it gets up to one bar or however you set up your heating system, there's 25 litres worth of beautiful, um, beautiful, lovely air for that to expand into via the rubber membrane. And it's very, very relaxed. The next thing I'd recommend, just to uh, get your heating system running nicely, and a lot of people, you know, this is different on every system. But I went to a call out yesterday. I got there. Uh, oh yeah, another thing just to say about the expansion vessel thing. Think about where you're gonna fit it. If you're putting a combi boiler in, you know, you're, you're gonna have to find somewhere to fit it. And that's a bit of a problem with this job here. We're gonna have to fit this expansion vessel that I'm gonna do in their utility room on the wall, but they're gonna have to box it in but it's just a requirement of the job, it's just how it is. I'm afraid, what do you want? A bit of boxing or no heating? I know what I'd want. I want a bit of boxing with a bit of Ica Tweave and a bit of detailing. Still walking down Beecham's abandoned railway, by the way, guys, just think, this could have been a railway line. I don't understand why, why back in the day, when they were mothballing all the railways, they pulled up, oh, look, lovely kingfisher there. They pulled up all the railway line and sold all the iron, they smelted it down and sold it. They should have just employed some old boy to walk up and down five meters, uh, five years, ah, miles of track and just spray it, spray it, keep it alive. But no, we didn't do that. Short-sighted country then, very poor after World War II and uh, needed to recoup some of our cash in the way a plumber does by taking all that stuff down the thing. Do you fit an electric boiler? I have fitted electric boilers in the past. I fitted some Ariston ones uh, for Emily's mum, actually. Uh, and it was, I mean, for her, <laughs> this is like, in a way, a little bit of a thing about customers and their slight lack of understanding about how heating systems work. Um, she had an oil boiler, and now she's got a gas boiler, an uh, um, electric boiler. And every time I see her, she queries me as to why her electricity bill's gone up. And I say, well, yeah, it would do, wouldn't it? But you now don't have an oil bill. So, you know, it swings and roundabouts, that one. Uh, and also she wants me to go and fit a ensuite in her, in her bedroom. Um, and when I asked her about it, I said, you got a radiator up there? She said, yeah, I've got, I've, got, um, I've got the radiator up there, so hot water for the bath should be okay. And I was like, well, that's, you just stop, don't you? 
I was like, it's not that. That's not the same body of water, is it? You know? Yeah, so I might have to beat her up for that. <laughs> Don't worry, Glennis. I love you. Don't worry about it. So, uh, the last thing, right, hold on. I have a boss who's not really nice at all, but I only have three months left on apprenticeship. Should I stick and leave after? Dude, if you've got three months left on your apprenticeship, stick it out, okay? I, I actually had a very, very good apprenticeship. I was really, really lucky. It was a nationwide company for a start, but one that was like older, it was an old one, and therefore it was running away that was a bit more, oh man, there's loads of birds there. It, it was running, it was like, it was like an old company, but you had very small regional offices of small groups of people, okay? Um, and that meant it was almost like working for a family firm. But also I got to do my G3 ticket. I also got fully qualified as a air conditioning and we've got 10% left of battery here, so I'm gonna have to leg it soon. Um, so yeah, it was really good. Just got an all round basic knowledge, well, very good knowledge, because I did commercial, light commercial and domestic. Um, and anyone who gives it the Billy Big Bollocks that commercial's like, oh, I do commercials, great, I know more than you. I'm sorry, commercial is so easy. It's just laid out for you, isn't it? Oh, and on a lovely schematic. Uh, okay, the pumps are bigger, the actuators are heavier, the boilers are bigger, and there's, you know, there's more health and safety to think about. But believe me, a domestic heating system is miles harder to get working properly than a commercial one. Commercial ones can be an absolute nightmare. Um, but yeah, my phone's running out of battery, guys, and I've stopped because I don't know if I want to walk down here. Actually, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go around here because last year, if any of you follow my um, vlog channel, Times of James, this was the field where we filmed picking the slows for my slow gin last year, which was absolutely gorgeous. Uh, looks like my battery is gone. Hey, free world's here. Free world loves a bit, Times of James. Look where we are as well. Look at these beautiful houses like up there. Beautiful view in the morning. Such a gorgeous place to sit out in the morning and um, and like have a nice sort of cup of coffee, watch a bit of Plumber Park. Don't worry guys, I know where I am. I actually lived in a house over there years and years ago uh, when I was first courting Emily and trying to get her to put out. But you know what they're like about them, it's difficult, isn't it? Uh, you trod in poo and it stinks. <laughs> oh guys, here we go. We've got the first, oh, has someone been up here and nailed all these slows? These, are oh, here we go, look, slows here. Slows are all up. This is a slow, that there. Slows are inedible because they just taste revolting and they give you a runny poo. Um, but the good thing about them is they're very nice, mixed with gin and sugar and maybe a little bit of almond essence. And then when you've made that, usually ready by about Christmas, a little shot of um, slow gin that you've made yourself, top that up with ginger ale, a couple of uh, cubes of ice, boom, it's gorgeous. What country am I in? I'm in England. Glorious, glorious England. Glorious, glorious place. Would you recommend installing a new heating system on copper or plastic pipe? Uh, Cambridgeshire. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm just answering like reverse questions. Copper, plastic pipe, uh, use both. Now, a lot of people don't like plastic pipe because some people see it top piped all the way up to the radiator and I think that looks absolutely crap. Shouldn't ever do that. Uh, but what I would say is that if you have plastic pipe, Hold on, just get me here, guys. If you have plastic pipe running through a really introverted route through a floor, and that means you only have no joints, you know, the only joints you have is at each end, then, hmm, I'm starting to think maybe I'll go for plastic pipe because there's no joints. I always see joints as points of failure, okay? And that's bad, we can't be having failure, can we? Indian or Chinese takeaway? No, tonight I'm going around a mate's house for a barbecue. There's gonna be loads of people there. It's gonna be an absolute steam sesh, can't wait. Uh, but I think what I'm going to do today, I've bought a tuk-tuk by the way, um, I'm going to put a photo of it up on the community page now and also I'm going to put a photo of it up on my Patreon. I'm about to go, okay? So guys, look, I'll pop back tomorrow and we'll do another live show then because I'll be out walking Jackie again and we can have a little chat. So come back tomorrow morning. In the meantime, subscribe to my Patreon by going to patreon.com forward slash plumber parts and go on there. It's a very nice way for you to show uh, any appreciation that you might have for the free videos that I do about plumbing, but also you get access to um, content that only you guys get, like outtake reels from videos and stuff like that. Um, so guys, I've got to go. Uh, I'll see you soon. Jack, come here. Come on, come here. Come here. We've got to go say goodbye to everybody now. Come here, come here. Sit, sit. Give the paw. Stay there. Look, he, he licks his little chops, doesn't he? Right, guys, I'll see you all later. I will love you very much.
see you tomorrow morning, okay, for another live video. Yeah, you happy dog? We can see the sheep and the squirrels and the cats. Let's go, Jack, come on. See you guys later, love you all. Hold set.